Next, Serbian nonviolent organizer and activist Ivan Maravic. Ivan is an organizer, software developer, and social innovator from Belgrade, Serbia. He was a student organizer and one of the leaders of Otpor, a resistance movement which played a critical role in the downfall of Slobodan Milosevic in 2000. But what I want to talk about now is a couple of things that I think are really relevant today. First one is that we shouldn't think that uh, like it is portrayed often in the movies or in the books, that dictatorship is some order, uh, discipline, strict uh, hierarchy and militarism, all this stuff. Dictatorship is often associated with chaos and dictators are agents of chaos. And definitely Milosevic back in the day, as I was growing up, was an agent of chaos. He was such a uh, good agent of chaos or such a successful agent of chaos that he actually ended up destroying our country, the country I was born in, Yugoslavia, which collapsed into a civil war, actually four consecutive wars that uh, dragged on over the 90s, poverty, we were placed under the international blockade by the United Nations, uh, there was like hyperinflation like we've never seen before in, in, in history, poverty, as I said, uh, and uh, a lot of people left the country as refugees. I was one of those who was contemplating. And then what happened is a protest started. There was like uh, manipulation of the elections at the local level. And uh, so I got dragged into the student protest, which lasted for four months, had a great time. You know, like we were marching during the day, uh, partying during the night. We were like really kind of uh, uh, very, very enthusiastic about it. But eventually after four months, uh, the energy died down. And this turned out to be a failure, although we made some small gains on the local level, as I said. So our kind of development was building from protest to a movement and trying to think beyond street protest. How can we challenge the dictatorship uh, uh, beyond the uh, street demonstrations and, and, and these kind of manifestations? So another thing which was important and, uh, and similar to what was happening in the Philippines, what Joaquin was already describing, was the manipulation of the election process. Not just stealing of the elections, but the manipulation of the whole process. Like, uh, you know, the, the registration of political parties, how they're being financed, how they're being, so like running a lot of fake candidates just to disrupt the, 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 the process. We had like hundreds of political parties that would be registered uh, and, and, you know, just to kind of make it more, more difficult for opposition to, to, to operate. But in the end, it came down to the stealing of the elections. If you cannot uh, manipulate things differently and people still vote uh, for, for the opposition candidate, which in our case was this boring uh, professor of law, uh, kind of conservative, uh, not very inspiring, but he was the candidate again against Milosevic in, in 2000. So what we needed to have to make sure that the elections are not stolen is several things. First one is 30,000 observers at the polling stations, which are going to document the fraud in uh, real time as it is happening. Second thing, we had to have population that is excited about voting and excited about, excited about defending their vote. So they should be determined to uh, go out and defend their vote once the, once the manipulation is, is uh, of the vote is happening. And the third thing, we had to have a very clear guidelines on what kind of uh, activities needed to, to protect the vote. So similar to what Joaquin was saying, you know, we needed to move away from violence. In our case, we were in the civil war. Uh, people who were now playing the role of the police and especially the special police were the same people who were responsible for war crimes in Bosnia and Kosovo. So we were, the last thing we wanted was to kind of play that game with them because we knew that these guys were capable of uh, like severe brutality. So that's why moving away from street protests towards non-cooperation was key. So that was the third part. The first one, documenting the vote, uh, voter fraud. The second one, 
getting people excited about defending their vote, and the third, giving them the clear guidelines on how to do it. Non-cooperation, first in their neighborhoods, in their towns, and this was building up after the elections for 10 days. They would block the local roads. They would uh, organize protests in their neighborhoods and in their uh, communities, not in the central uh, point, but rather dispersed around. And they would organize strikes and blockades in, in the places of work, where there was a kind of workplace action, and especially started with the, with the students and then people in the retirement homes and then uh, taxi drivers, uh, public transportation drivers. And then finally, it, at the end, it was the miners in the coal mines which were supplying coal to the electricity production, which kind of threatened to put the whole country in, in darkness. So that uh, non-cooperation was crucial to actually uh, fight back against the uh, against the, the dictatorship and the and, and Milosevic's attempt to steal the elections. Because although he could uh, confront us in the street, and he did, uh, it was a problem for him to confront people when they were like stopping work and and uh, and actually uh, fighting him back with the. Uh, with a general strike, essentially. So in an time. essence, yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm about to. So in an essence, our, our biggest maybe uh, success was in, the, uh, in those three principles that we, that we actually managed to come up with over a longer period of time and probably 10 years of trial and error. Uh, but essentially, that was the reason why his attempts to manipulate the elections, uh, to steal the votes, and finally to crush the protests didn't succeed in the end.